This is Mike. And what year is this, by the way? Is this 2006, 2005? Uh, maybe a little before that. Okay, I'm so not watch, even sure what that clip is. So, so watch how you're defending Scientology. This is Mike Rinder sitting on the board, okay, international spokesperson. You're going to hear a very different Mike in this clip than the one right here on the podcast. Go for it. Play it. I've known Tom for uh, 15 years. Mm -hmm. I consider him a friend. Do you think he's a good uh, spokesperson for Scientology? I think he's a very good representation of what a Scientologist is. I think he's uh, obviously successful. He's uh, obviously very happy. He does a lot to help other people. Mm -hmm. He uh, lives an ethical life. But last year, the star was orbiting far from planet Hollywood into the galaxies of Scientology. Many wondered, did he wander off too far? Does the church ever call Tom Cruise and say, you know what, pull back the reins a little? No, I don't think anybody in the world calls Tom Cruise and tells him to pull back the reins. But Tom Cruise and other celebrities do promote Scientology's agenda. Does the church actively recruit celebrities? No. No, the church is open to anybody. No one specifically told, we'd like to get more celebrities because celebrities sort of up the profile of Scientology. We have a list of celebrities. None of that. Absolutely not. Uh, Absolutely not. You can pause it right there. hmm. How do you feel watching this right now, by the way? How do you feel watching this? It's ridiculous. I mean, I look at Is it tough to watch it or is is it... I'm sort of used to it. Okay. People have shoved yeah. this stuff in my face for some time. Have <laughs> well, you seen this one? I hadn't seen that for a long time. Got it's it. funny. I saw Hoda at an event that I did with Leah one time for, oh, it was like the premiere of the movie she did with J-Lo. And we were at the premiere and Hoda walked in and she knows Leah pretty well. And she said, oh, hi. And I'm like, she said, yeah, I interviewed you. I said, oh, really? Okay. Now, this, I, I didn't recall at that time that I had been interviewed by her. And I say in the beginning of this book, one of the things that worried me about writing it was the fact that Sea Org members are so sleep deprived that you have a sort of a, you, you live in a fog. I look at myself on that clip and I go, oh, my God, I look terrible. I look like I haven't slept for a month. I look like I'm sort of like sleepwalking through this interview, dazed. That is the impression that I get of myself on there. And it's probably true. If that was 2006, I probably came out of the hole to go and do that interview like I did I was in the ho- the hole. Yeah, what's this every hole time you I talk about? <laughs> every time like, can I can you say go back word. and see what he looked like there? I actually thought you looked pretty good there. Uh, you, so yeah. it's interesting that your take on that is that you didn't feel like you looked good. Oh, you actually look kind of pale, but uh, yeah, I look kind of pale. My you were saying the hole. The hole. Go ahead. Yeah. The hole is it was um, something that was depicted on the Going Clear HBO doc. It was a prison. Uh, at the International Headquarters of Scientology in Riverside County, uh, California. And I I write a whole chapter about the hole because it was where the senior echelons of Scientology hierarchy were locked up by David Miscavige and basically in a Lord of the Flies world, beating confessions out of one another to in order to satisfy Miscavige that uh, everybody had somehow confessed to the terrible things that they were thinking or doing that was making his life difficult. Um, I was a very unique uh, inmate of the whole in that when the media would reach out for a spokesperson to come and talk and they couldn't be persuaded not to do the show at all, I would be taken out of the hole and escorted to do an interview with the media. Like someone would fly with me on a plane to New York. I talk about going in on the Today Show with Katie Couric and lying about the the Xenu OT3 story. This with Hoda is another example of that, of being pulled out, sent off, and 
answering questions in the way that it was expected that would be uh, the, you know, the correct Scientology answer. The fact that I say in there that there was never any effort to get celebrities in Scientology is so absurd. There is an entire organization in Scientology called the Celebrity Center, which is dedicated to attracting and servicing celebrities. Because Hubbard said very early on, celebrities are opinion leaders. They make people see things in a certain way. If Tom Cruise comes out and says, I'm a Scientologist and Tom Cruise is the biggest movie star in the world, then there is a whole lot of people that will go, well, if Tom Cruise is a Scientologist, may not be so bad. Maybe all this crap I've heard about it isn't really true. Maybe it really is helping him. It may, it may be able to help me. And Cruz was recognized by David Miscavige as being the single source of the greatest number of new Scientologists in the history of Scientology. Wow. Now, whether that's true or not is another thing. There is also a lot of bullshit that goes into these claims that Scientology makes about anything. But Tom Cruise was perceived by David Miscavige as the biggest asset that Scientology had. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.